If you've done the assessment, good on you, well done, let's continue. The next, uh, the next agenda I found was pretty much some of the deeper truths that I found on this journey was <laughs> everyone else was a, was a professional and everyone else seemed to think that they know what is going on and quite often everyone's journey is different so it's different for you and you need to just have a look at what it is for you and own your personal truths but let me debunk the myths that i discovered i discovered that uh, so often it was said you know this is just an obstacle get over it and uh, i found that to, to do absolutely nothing for me and it just got me even deeper in a state of frustration and i discovered that that it's not an obstacle and it's not something you can get over it's a process and it's a process that you actually go through so there's no huge obstacle that and there's a destination on the other side that you have to hop over it is actually up the process that you're going through and where you are in your process right now is where you actually are where you're meant to be and that's uh, where you are what you're ready for right now and the tools will come to you at the right time and right place which is i believe why you are here with me at this present time so it is not an obstacle that you get over it is a process that you go through so we accept it as the process and we be gentle with the process and we roll with the punches and we take it as it comes the second myth that i found did not resonate with me at all is uh, time heals all wounds okay yes there is a truth there as time wears on that gives us a chance to be able to see to get different perspectives to see a broader perspective and yes it does help but i do find that love heals far faster in some and in some um, instances actually instantly so even if you're in a state where you're not getting uh, often we we uh, we think that we are this body waiting for love to express itself to us or waiting for experience to to the experiences that we dive into for love to express itself and i want us to look at it from very differently whereas in fact you are love itself looking to express itself you're not looking for the the experience of love to express itself you are love itself looking for a place to express itself start with yourself if you haven't been given the love from the others start giving it to yourself start knowing your worth and your deservingness and be start being kind to yourself and uh, that's a big part of this we, we've got to be gentle with ourselves we're going to be caring and loving with ourselves um, there are tools where there are self self-love um, and worthiness there are the affirmations and mantras they are on uh, that there are videos that are available to you and there will be links to, for you to go and find those as well uh, the third myth that I discovered was that uh, ah, is that uh, medication will balance out my chemicals I'm not saying that that's, this is a complete untruth. I'm saying that uh, everything is truthful in its own way. I think that truth itself evolves and expands just as we do, just as the whole universe is. So, while yes, I'm not saying there isn't an imbalance of chemicals. I'm saying indeed there is. But I'm not saying that we just need to fix the, um, the, the imbalance. It just create balance to the imbalance while that is what we're intending to do i'm not saying that 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 is the root symptom i'm saying for us to dig deeper and uh, instead of just treating the symptom because i believe that the depression itself is a feedback mechanism that something is out of whack something is out of balance and those chemical imbalance is also part of that I'm saying that there's a deeper cause to that and we'll delve into exactly what causes that as we get in, into the course. So we need to also then shift that myth of saying, oh, we just need to fix the chemical imbalance and let's medicate it. It's like while that is a useful tool, 
um, we need to delve deep and say what is causing that, a, that chemical imbalance because that chemical, chemical imbalance is part of the symptoms for a deeper truth. We need to, we need to uncover that and, uh, and then treat that and that is treated on an emotional level and not just a chemical level. Cool. The last myth that I discovered was uh, you are what you feel. So often it says I am depressed, I am stressed, I, I am in the state of anxiety. Where I want to shift that and kind of reverse engineer it is what you feel you become. What you feel you become. Now that gives a lot more, a lot more openness and that gives a lot more potential. Because now you're not just saying, I am depressed, I have all this negativity. You can actually say, with some shifts, I can be something else. The big point that I'm getting to here is, we often identify ourselves with our emotions and our feelings. I am sick. I am depressed. I am anxious. Whereas, if we start saying, I'm feeling depressed, I'm feeling stressed out, I'm feeling anxious. We suddenly are not identifying ourselves with that emotion. We are instead identifying the emotion itself. So once we can identify the emotion itself, you're almost putting it, you're not identifying with it, you're just identifying it. And that makes a big difference to our outlook because the emotions do change. There is a tide, there is everything cyclical, hence success loops. So the takeaway from that is don't always identify yourself with the negative feeling that you're feeling. You're bigger than what you think. Great, we've accomplished the first part, um, which is the welcome, take the assessment, and debunking a couple of myths that surround it. In our next video, we're going to be looking at um, the five quick fixes just to prime our pump to get us ready to do some deeper work. I'll see you on the other side of this. The Big Cigar.